This week was crazy with people DDoSing open source projects like Express and uh, other videos, and maybe I'll put some links around describing the situation. But long story short, someone sold the idea to new developers that to get a job in IT, in web development, you need to contribute to open source. This is a very bad idea. To contribute to open source, usually I contribute into existing projects, so you need to understand A, technology, B, you need to understand the things you're contributing to. So to understand them, you need to work with them. You need to find actual problems. See, maybe there are some alternatives. Maybe someone actually fixed that already. So you need to play with that a little bit, get some experience. And then in the last result, you are contributing. But what people did, they just made very funky, very strange, very bizarre pull request, adding their names to read me files, like bonkers. And I will show you in this video how I was contributing over nine years, like nine years. It felt like it was yesterday, but I joined Node community nine years ago, moving from PHP and vanilla JavaScript word and creating frameworks for companies like Nokia. But I was contributing and I got some amazing badges like Arctic Vault badge on my GitHub. But as you will see, a lot of my contributions don't count. They're not even visible on my profile because the way how people are using them. Sometimes you may spend a lot of time and a lot of effort contributing to open source and it wouldn't mean anything. I hope this will show you it's not as simple as make contribution and you'll get a job. It's not as simple you make contribution, you'll be rewarded. Sometimes you'll be abandoning stuff. Sometimes you will see things that were just dumb and were bad ideas and people will shun you down, but you will learn something from that. Let's go on. That will be very honest video showing my growth over the years. The first contribution was pretty bad. So this is OctoKit. If I remember, there was library around Express to manage multiple identities, I think around Express and Passport. I wanted to support e-tags, which I used normally for requests for caching, managing the cache, to ensure that browser wouldn't download things too many times, if I really have it cached. I made PR, which is bad. I wouldn't be showing, but maybe I'll show you. PR is bad because it has a lot of formatting. Actually, I hid it, but I cannot read it. And I have things over here. I saw there was some console lock flying around, which was bad. Maybe this one, some other. It is bad. And it wasn't much. But what happened was at some point, guys started to have some problems. They closed my PR and they started to discuss that. They started to discuss the, exactly the same thing. And find the workarounds and find different solutions in the project. So my code wasn't much to the project, but punched the contributors in the direction that there is some need and maybe they have a better idea how to solve that problem than me. They didn't like my way, but they did like the use case I had. Another project, quite nice one, is GitHub Tools. GitHub, I think there was some toolkit for Node to talk into GitHub API. Is it relatively big? It's a relatively big project. like. Almost like 800 folks. That's big project. And the change was silly. I had to, probably for some middleware, expose XHR, which was done for requests. Maybe I wanted to read some extra metadata headers. I don't remember. One thing, I really don't remember what I did. So probably it would be better if I put more explanation. Contributor, she accepted that she liked the change and it was merged. It was nice, cleanly merged. Was it? No. She cherry-picked. So this PR is closed with my changes in a code base, but nothing on my profile. Ta da Let's go further. That's the project. Another one, Pros Mirror. The author of Pros Mirror, Martin, is one of the most opinionated people on earth. Like Linus Torvaldsen level. He's an amazing engineer. I think he wrote a lot of JavaScript for one of those books. He is amazing. As an engineer, his code is bonkers and it taught me many things so my problem was that i was forking his project i was using some linting tools which weren't happy with his project they, they thought we are the he's shadowing some variables where he actually wasn't and he made very nice comment which now i appreciate after years which is saying in any case i don't feel compelled to make my project code conform to whatever linting rules other people are using and this is fair comment he shut me down, but he gave me quite good lesson. Not everything is for everyone. But let's move on. Support dates, JSON to YML. 
odd situation when my app was using JSON. My DevOps or something else was using YML. We needed this bridge and it didn't support dates. And my change, except some, I have no idea what I did, some reorganization, some mess thing around. That's actually the change. Whatever. Um, it's just dropping date in proper format. And it's, it's matched. That's on my profile. Yay! Another one. Atomos, I think there was server side rendering HTML to string. I had to drop some dependency because it wasn't building, wasn't upgrading, whatever. Made small change. This actually, clear enough, context right. It's matched. Nice. But nothing too complex. Another one. So this is for Cloudflare project. No, Cloudflare. So some adapter for Cloudflare. I think I was doing something with revalidating cache, uh, probably for one of my static websites. It wasn't doing everything I, as I needed. It wasn't sending the flag for proxy thing. Maybe when I was doing with that with AG proxy, I don't remember. Maybe I should put more context there. There was some that originated from some discussion on the support. I made pull request. It passed. And it's merged. Manly. It's not on my profile. Yay, I'm again contributing and have nothing in return. See, already, I wouldn't be hired for that, for all these contributions. Let's move on. NGX admin. I was contributing to a few men stack projects. So many changes, so big thing. Some other one, closed, merged, etc. Long discussion, everything. And at some point, there are still some issues. Things are not building. Guys see the problem. But I'm already gone. I moved on and never came back. In fact, someone else made another peer and fixed the issue when I wasn't around. Which means if you have own your own open source project, it may happen. People will start something, will give you PR, you will give them feedback and they will just ghost you. And it's normal because they cannot expect you to spend some time on reviewing their PRs, checking if your contribution is worthy to be merged. The same as a maintainer, you cannot expect people to come back and do whatever you want for the project for free. It really depends on person's will and time, etc. This case, it just died. It was a lot of effort. See, 250 P commits in that one PR. That was a problem. Only 8 files change. That's bad. Another one, smart table for some Angular 2 component. Made PR, found its duplicate. What's the change? Was it worth it? Come on, one liner. Did it spend too much time? And another one, Angular busy. I think there was screen loaded component. I think I was upgrading to Angular merged. Maintenance accepted. Fixed code coverage for MFE started something. He accepted and closed it. No idea. CC Fi. This is something for packaging SCSS. The maintainer accepted my comments, but decided like they want different way to do it, and just closed it for Vinyl. Vinyl was a file system extension used uh, hugely in Gulp. I had some problem with low-level things, which I don't fully understand. I kind of fixed, but the guys gave another way, and they just closed it. Oh, I closed it, but they solved it. Support regex in XH uh, mock. This is a big project for mocking up requests for tests. That quite clean. Let's see. Is the big change? Nah. Just some types. TypeScript project, that's actually cool. Needed it for some tests. Social login, adding prompt, uh, contextify, ping pong with a maintainer. I just closed it and said I will come back and never came back. I was contributing to a website for Alnac, London Node user group, and I printed some list of events. Ah, uh, yay, I'm contributor, hooray. And one of those who landed me on the Arctic Vault, it's Gatsby. So I was playing with Gatsby. I didn't do anything big there, honest. But I was finding issues because I was learning GraphQL and I wasn't seeing the errors because Gatsby was swallowing them. So I spent so much time debugging, so much time debugging, digging into stack trace. Brain hurt! But then I found it, made PR, which is tiny. Absolutely tiny. I'm changing regular expression. I'm good in regular expressions. Look good to me. Got Kale said nice catch. Uh huh. Kale. Thank you, Kale. And it's match. And I I got squawk. I I think I got some socks from them. We got some socks. I still have those socks. Missing example. That's probably some 
yeah, missing example in documentation. That's kind of good PR. So I was using their library. I was using Gatsby Learning, and I found that are things not explained very well. So I spent a lot of time reverse engineering, trying to figure out how to do those things. Once I did it, I documented, and that went. That was merged to documentation. Amazing. That's a good contribution. Gatsby starter, Fabian, amazing developer. He merged some changes. What are we did? Google Analytics and Google Verification. So probably some examples how to use those things with with um, Gatsby. I'm not using Gatsby for years now, but it's over there for you, free to use. Why I needed that? Because I needed to use Google Analytics and verification. Wow, Gatsby starter. And again, fi com fixing this CAS plugin. I needed that. I was learning. I needed that for my blog. And yet again, some errors eaten by the webpack. What was that? Is it another regular expression? No. So over here, it seems like some in some data flow, some errors were swallowed. They didn't pop out. You didn't know what's happening. Very small PR. Hours and hours and hours of debugging. How many lines we have? It's like five lines of code after hours of debugging. Ta-da! Merged. I'm contributor of Gatsby. And again, Gatsby. I wouldn't even dig into that. And Prebit, I was doing something with AdOps uh, advertisement and this was this one this one actually was interesting. So normally their code was perfect. Their code will work. It's just using Folet in. It shouldn't make any difference. But we live in a times where people were patching array objects, especially in app ops, the micro optimization for how JavaScript works in a browser. People are wrapping native classes, trying to catch, observe everything. And then it turns out that iterator wasn't working anymore on those arrays and we had to patch it. Bonkers. Why I needed it? Because I was working on a project using that. And then after Gatsby, I moved to Eleventy, amazing project for static websites far lighter than Gatsby, of course, because just doing HTML. There were some assumptions in a project that forced you to weigh collection in a specific way and it made quite difficult to use things like tags or a different taxonomy. So I made my own plugin, which I will show you in a second, and I needed some changes, so I did add them by option. So everything worked in a way how it was before, but you can pass some option to configuration and it started to work in a more scalable way. Zach was an amazing developer, creator of Eleventy, had discussion about that people were going back and forth. Some people are still like, were voting for that in this discussion. We need that. It was never merged, never changed. I'm not using Eleventy, but there are some people using the fork. Yay! And another big vendor, iFramely, one of the biggest repositories for embedding stuff on your web page. They have a commercial version, they have an open source version. And I have a problem with YouTube, plugin, APIs, whatever. I made PR, it is closed, they didn't like, no. They merged that to develop branch manually and it was released. But I'm not contributor, officially, but I'm contributor. Ta-da! Not on my profile, I'm not being rewarded for contributing to iFramely. And the last one, one of my colleagues who are using Clojure, Clojure has a very strange format for called EDN for passing data, which is a bonkers thing that compared to JSON or YML, you can have a key which is an object. And I had to map it in some way. There were some rare cases where it was working, but not for us. So I just added support. Again, optional support for that. Very simple PR. Adding new options. Adding new mapping. A lot of comments over here. New mapping. Test. But um, I use that in my project. Done. So as you see, many of my PRs are not linked to my profile because people merge them manually. Many PRs are dropped but people decided to do the same thing in their own way. Some of them are merged, but are tiny. I may have spent days doing the thing and resulted in very tiny contribution. But all of them resulted from me actually using those tools. And are there any repositories I created myself to the open source world? Too many. But there are some which are used by others. And I'm sometimes surprised. So I have a 38 NPM packages, yay. At least 10 of them will be forks of other packages, but let's forget about it. Why did for packages? Sometimes when I need to use some third party library and I have no chance, or I don't know, when this library will merge my changes. And they're using something like rollup, which makes a little bit more difficult 
which is just bundle that in my project. I need to push that to npm, so I create a new name of a package, publish, and I'm the only person using that. And it happens. Later, when they merge, I just abandon or kill that project. Usually I just abandon because maybe someone is using that, and if I remove that from npm, that could be another left path scenario, killing one other project. So what we have over here, event debugger. I have no idea what it's doing. It says something with events. I have no idea what it's doing. But there are two weekly downloads. This one is bonkers. I don't remember specifics, but there was a case in Mongoose that depending on the order how you imported modules, they could have different instances of Mongoose, so different connections, and, and part of your code will work. Part of your code will say, I'm not connected to my Mongo database. So this one basically was finding the, the root one. And it's still used by 29, 29 downloads weekly. Who's using that? It's very old. It's nine years ago. Bookmaker.js. This is bonkers. This is just package with some mathematical functions used in betting. And it's 14 downloads a week. Not much, but you think maybe it's fueling some gambling. Should they give me some percent of the income? Dirty money. Let's move. Roadmarks. Another bonkers. 36 downloads per week. And this is something that allows you to create table of contents of markdown documents in your project i use it once for one project push that and it's still used by someone no idea by who mongoose compare no downloads but this was amazing this was one of the edge cases where there was a period where depending how you build the query with mongoose you could have either object or id as a string or id as an object of id it was no easy way to compare them i made this facility and for some time you see there are still some downloads for some time it was used by quite many people to do this comparison later. They added that to Mongoose. Yay. Let's move on. Thank you. Thank you. Now currently not used because it's resolved, but in the early days, especially around attack, when you didn't have things like Google Tag Manager, you really had to control the way in which order you are loading different tags, different third parties on your website, especially if it was newspaper website, etc. And that was that. Just queuing downloading later we had things like defer attribute and now no one is using that but it was an amazing project to do git sh1 commit i had to do some debugging and i wanted to create some cli tools and we tried to find some issues with our git there were some inconsistencies and i had to figure out how to recompose the sha commit because there's logic how these hashes are created and for someone who comes as a self-taught developer from front end development from this low complexity area it is quite bonkers because it turned out later that there are some things about encoding about special imprintable characters somewhere on the end of the buffers that will change your hash so that was massive learning a nice thing to start to play with git flow db another bonkers project someone is still downloading that which is basically allowing you to create commits and branches of your data in mongoose another bonkers project it's wildcards by reverse so try to find the best wildcard for given inputs i don't remember what i did but i had to gulp dust compiler no one is using dust anymore people are using pack maybe using handlebars it was used by us i think in lucky i even did some dependency injection toolkit for note and someone is still downloading that one project actually i'm quite proud of is pump page object model, which was one of the concepts we did when we we're doing Lucky CMS in Enigma Services, when we tried to show the document as an object. At this time, there weren't many projects doing that. Most up to this day, I use HTML as a document format, and only recently we have projects like Editor JSIO, which are using this concept. So it was quite cutting edge at the time. Lucky CMS had small adaptation, but it was quite nice. It was a very good experiment, which I'm using to those days in building CMSs. It's a very nice and flexible way to represent content when it's semantic, when it doesn't have all this markup, all this styling. It's magic. And you can reuse that on native. You can reuse it on desktop, on mobile. We recommend maybe not this project, but maybe you can take a look as a reference how to build models for your data. And before modern WYSIWYG, there was Medium Editor, and I made a number of plugins. This one is still being downloaded seven years ago. Who is using it? This one is funky. So this was using JSDoc, and 
transforming that to dot file which is used by graphics to generate diagrams so you can have a like diagram of flows in between your functions or in between your objects some basic uml directly for, from a JS doc and people are still downloading six years ago never did it again react mobile pick a wheel replicating nice wheel on iphone i did it for push for i think and eleventy plugin block again i was using eleventy for my blog I had a lot of taxonomy. It wasn't well supported. I made a plugin. I was using that. Then I abandoned. Some people are still downloading that. Even some CLI to create it commits by Jira. And another bonkers project I had is use state transition, which is hook that creates something like state machine, but focus on transitions in between specific states rather than normal on leave on enter on specific states. If that makes sense. In rare cases, it makes sense for the logic I had to implement in one project and I couldn't find good implement implementation. I spent over one month checking every single third party if I can achieve the same thing. I couldn't. So then I wrote and we're using it in one of the projects. And I found it amazing. But to be honest, now I will be rewriting that to use a reducer because it will be much simpler to maintain. And one package is actually from PR, which I was merged to use editable by Formidable Labs. Amazing team. So this editable, amazing um, hook they're using for WYSIWYG, like content editable, and it had problem with working in iframes. So I didn't know, because it was quite a stale project, if they would do anything about it. We make PR, and I didn't want to wait for them to merge. So I have this package, now I'm using that in my project. In the meantime, they merged it, so I can abandon this one and start using the main branch. That's how it works. So I hope you enjoyed this quite heavily edited clip. It wasn't too boring. And the next one, I will tell you about how I learn how to write books as a software developer. And you can check this video.